All right, hello, citizens of the Nigerverse. It is Niger once again, and this is gonna be another wrestling review. So, oh, oh, we continue our look, look at awful wrestling matches for for awful month. And don't worry, it's not all wrestling matches for awful month this year. We are getting some movies and some video games, uh, games, but those are coming uh, a little bit later. So, uh, stay tuned and hold on to the. Those, uh, fasten your seatbelts, if you will, if they aren't fastened already. But, but um, like last year, or when I did Awful Month, I, uh, out of all the reviews I did for Awful Month, I only stuck with three companies. I, I did WWE, WCW, and TNA. Uh, but, but, those aren't the only companies that I do reviews for, because... I forgot about ECW, and, and goodness knows that at the land of extreme has had some some bad days at the office. So I did some digging, I uh, did some research uh, as to what what were some of the what are some of the worst ECW matches is and and apparently he according to who uh, who uh, <clears throat> who according to where, where is the article that. That I had, uh, had, uh, had uh, according to the article that I had, according to Cage Match, they consider this to be the worst ECW match of all time. But is that the case? Ace, uh, let's find out. I'm talking about ECW Guilty as Charged 1999, as Taz finally, after months of chasing, finally gets his hands on the world champion, the franchise, Shane Douglas. So, as always, I'm not professional, not professional wrestling reviewer or analyst or anything like that. Just a man who enjoys a good time, and if you've been keeping up with the theme of this month, uh, not really a good time here, or, uh, or all things considered. Now, is it the worst match that I've seen this month? No. Is it going to be the worst match that I've seen this month? I'm going to see this month? Probably not. Uh, is it the worst wrestling match I've seen of all time? Far from it, but it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good. And and uh, and on one hand, I can kind of see, I can kind of see where people are coming from. Um, uh, um, I'm sure her point of view will probably scratch her heads at this and say like, Nigel, there are worse ECW matches. Which, first of all, if there are, uh, please drop them in the comments. But uh, uh, I'm sure once I kind of break down why a lot of people consider this to be he. He uh did be, he uh he did not great ECW uh, match. Perhaps it'll make more sense as to why it's here. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you see these reviews mine before, you kind of know how this works. If you haven't, I'm gonna be talking about why I liked and disliked about the match. But uh, uh because it is awful month, we're doing the inverse. So I'm doing what I dislike first, then getting into what I like. So oh uh kind of what I dislike. Hey, this match. Very much brawl heavy, like, like uh, he like definitely he uh, he. So the story kind of uh, to paint the picture, or right, maybe it does get a bit foggy at times. But uh, the gist of it is that kind of as I alluded to, Taz has been gunning for Shane Douglas, had been number one contender for the ECW Championship uh, for a little while, but Shane Douglas couldn't. Uh, but Shane Douglas not really defending against Taz. As partially because he's so banged up, like and Shane Douglas is pretty banged up. up. Like, like Seth Rollins might have been working as world heavyweight champion and being injured. In fact, he literally returned tonight on Raw. Uh, uh, and yes, I'm recording this Monday night, but uh, he literally returned on Raw. But Shane, but uh, Seth Rollins, while he might have been injured as world heavyweight champion, and while Roman Reigns might have, I think, was also injured while the Universal Champion. They ain't got nothing on Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas is uh is at this point in time pretty much being uh, pretty much operating on glass bones and paper skin, pretty much held together by duct tape at this point, having a laundry list of, of injuries, probably as long as the list of holes that Chris Jericho knows, if if you get that reference. But uh, yeah, so Shane Douglas is uh is uh, by all accounts he probably should have vacated the ECW World Championship, but uh, for some reason, and for reasons that I'm not sure of, that a lot of people aren't sure of, Paul Heyman just insisted that Shane Douglas had to be the ECW 
the world champion, even despite hey, being injured, even despite having pretty much like a new injury every week, collecting them pretty much like Boy Scout badges or like Pokemon cards. Or it's like, hey, Shane Douglas was in really bad shape. And so, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, I imagine that's probably, that probably did put a damper on this match because it's not the fluid uh, match day you definitely could have because of that like like from what from what I've heard and from the sample size I've seen not quite as much here on the channel but kind of just it's in my it's kind of just in my travels watching like wrestling clips and stuff like that Shane Douglas pretty solid in the ring and of course Taz the human suplex machine he in a you know throwing those suplexes and, and them suit bones uh owns uh is his uh Taz but uh, yeah yeah um yeah, yeah, but I think I think I think this brings us to why one of these one of the reasons why this match is looked on that favorably is because for all intents and purposes this should have really been a showdown. This should have really felt like a major showdown, especially considering this is how Taz won the ECW Championship. If, uh, if, yeah, Taz wins it here, breaks Shane Douglas's 406-day uh, ECW title reign, which apparently, according to uh, who the wiki is, the longest reign in the ECW Championship's history. But, uh, yeah, so what should have felt like a big moment, what should have felt like a big, uh, cathartic, hick and awesome moment for Taz finally getting his time in the limelight. Uh, it's, uh, sadly, is not so, but yeah. Yeah, so oh, uh, Taz gunning for Shane Douglas to the point where, because he can't have the world championship, decides to create his own title. Man, Bet between him and Ted DiBiase, yeah, get, he, uh, I guess as uh, both Taz and Ted DiBiase have taught us, hey, if you can't have the world championship, you might as well make your own. So Taz introduces the FTW championship, stands for F the world. Well, still a kind of active championship today, even though it kind of goes in and out of canon when it comes to uh, how AEW, when it comes to like how AEW recognizes it and sanctions it and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so Taz creating his own championship. But and, uh, will he finally get his hands on this one here? Uh, what well, well, I just said he did, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, so I kind of set the stage there or to kind of explain why this match didn't go as well as it could have. Uh, so this match is very well, uh, job, brawl heavy. heavy. Uh, they are, are able to suplex each other around on um, stuff like that. Uh, and props to Shane, even though oh, Shane is still pretty banged uh, up at this point in time, still still taking some, uh, still taking quite a few bumps, courtesy of Taz. But but uh. <clears throat> Yeah, have very much brawl heavy, including them brawling uh, around the crowd, uh, which admittedly is kind of like an ECW thing. They did brawl in the crowd quite a bit. It's uh, it uh, I guess it's like having peanut butter without the jelly, you know. Which to be fair, some people do, but uh, but yeah, so oh, uh, so definitely some crowd brawling, uh, including in, uh, in Shane being dropped onto a uh, concrete divider, her uh, her and uh, him being busted open that way, and then and Shane nailing Taz in the face with a chair, her and Taz being busted open, so both men bleeding, hang, and Taz even back dropping Shane Douglas onto like a a wooden uh, like a wooden like board and stuff in the crowd, and then. Uh, and Shane just like sliding Taz down and so oh there was some brawling in the crowd how nothing too spectacular though like I think crowd brawling can be kind of hit or miss like like it can be fun or exciting or interesting if you do fun exciting interesting things with it but if it's just like like punch punch move move uh, 10 feet punch punch move to Ten, ten feet, punch, punch, and then, then that's when it becomes kind of boring. And they were, they were definitely kind of in that territory. And then, and then, and um, they do get back in the ring. And that's when everything. I think this is the other reason, and we're getting into the other reason because then everything just goes into overbook city. Yeah, because in comes Sabu, Sabu who has a neck brace, and they explain on commentary that uh, that uh, Sabu, who uh, was that Taz was manipulated by Shane Douglas into breaking Sabu's neck. So Sabu, who uh, is very upset and pretty much beats the crap out of both of them, he beats down Shane Douglas, he beats down. On uh, Taz has diving on the multiple times. Even Sabu coming in and uh and hanging a dive, like in the ring, hang, uh, off the ropes as he's coming down and everything. Which H A props to Sabu for doing that with a broken neck. But also, oh uh, oh Sabu is kind of fifty fifty. He's he is more like 
80 20 he, he's either going that 80 percent is he's going to botch the crap out of it and, and something's gonna go horribly wrong or for the 20 percent is he's going to he's going to nail his moves and they're going to look like either really spectacular or at the very least pretty decent Thankfully, we got 20% Sabu tonight. Uh, 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 he did almost slip if, uh, when he was going for, or I believe it was the, uh, like the moonsault plancha out of the ring onto both Taz and Shane Douglas on the outside. But thankfully, Sabu did recover. So Sabu didn't horribly botch anything. So, oh, good job, Sabu. But that hen and out comes, and the hen out comes uh, Sunny. He, uh, he, which, uh, which is worth mentioning, Francine, in, uh, the head cheerleader, her, uh, her, uh, her, if you're too young to get that reference, then I'm not gonna bother explaining it, but, uh, yeah, so Francine is accompanying, uh, Shane Douglas here, here, and then, uh, Sonny, he comes in, and, and, and they squabble a bit, and Francine, uh, spears, uh, Sonny, so they kind of, they kind of duke it out for a little bit. It, and then they're pulled apart by both Shane Douglas and Chris Candido. So Chris Candido comes in, but then Chris Candido punches Shane Douglas in the mouth. Also, the triple threat is no more. And the triple threat was a stable in ECW that was uh, that was uh, Shane Douglas, Chris Candido, and Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, but the triple threat is no more. Candido turns on uh, turns on on uh on uh shane douglas and then from there taz locks in the kata hajime aka the taz mission and shane douglas passes out from there allowing taz to win the world championship but it does but i do think think that kind of like all those run-ins and stuff does kind of put a damper on it now there's a way to do it right I, 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 uh, if this year's wrestlemania was any indicator there's a way to do like uh run-ins and everything correctly to where it pays off this one it didn't really because as it definitely it definitely went off the rails and it definitely went overboard with it especially sabu who beating down how <clears throat> uh, i'm be eating down both uh both uh candido and taz as like like i'm say the the running in does make taz look kind of weak he uh he, i don't know if i go that far because a it was just a simple punch from candido and b sabu was beating them both up but uh yeah it is kind of overbooking and sabu who also worth mentioning up until like like, towards like the tail and Sabu had the music playing the whole time. What do you think is New Jack? But uh but uh, yeah, so I think that definitely put a damper on things and I, and I can kinda see why people oh, didn't really like this match as much. Like like it was kinda it was kinda uninteresting uh for the most part her go her uh or like going into the crowd and everything and then um and then the stuff happened at the end. Now do I think that might have been because Shane Douglas was so banged up? that's a possibility but i think it does detract from the match quite a bit it uh it uh it uh it, i met imagine though that had uh they kind of had to do this way because as you, you had to take off shane douglas eventually and and i guess the as after this uh gives shane some time to heal whether or not he did that i'll have to read into but uh but yeah it is unfortunate the match panned out the way it did because it could have been should have been so much more it should have been a big moment has finally getting his hands on shane douglas and finally choking uh kind of, and finally choking out shane douglas to win the ecw world championship and i think excuse me if i'm mistaken i think this is taz's first ecw world championship win but uh but sadly uh but sadly it's kind of ruined by all the extra smoking mirrors again there's a way to pull that off and there's a way to make it look good but this was not it unfortunately so oh i can understand why people kind of resent this match as the way that they do if i had to find some redeeming quote and, and another thing i do have to point out oh joey styles being the only one on commentary like like uh now oh granted joey styles i think was solo f who oh, uh, was usually solo on commentary in ECW, if I'm not mistaken. And, but at the same time, it does lead to quite a bit of dead air. Or thankfully, having like a, a two or even three man commentary team means that like when and one person stops talking, then the other person picks it up from there or or they can kind of ping off each other. When it's just Joey Styles, how's, you know, you, you get moments like the dead air. Or, uh, or, and Joey Styles even sounded, almost sounded kind of bored or dead in some regards, but 
uh, from time to time that is, but, but, uh, but I guess, uh, what can you do, but, uh, yeah, so, oh, uh, that definitely did take away from it. If I had to find some redeeming qualities about it, it, um, uh, it, uh, about, about, uh, how, how to imagine everything, and, um, uh, hang, uh, I'll have to, uh, kind of will have to think. And, uh, thing is, like, at least he's nothing was horribly botched. I'll give him that. It just, it's, like, very uninteresting. Like, like, it's not like a totally cringeworthy, oh my god, this is so horrible match. It's more so just kind of, it's kind of there. It, it's pretty dull. Like, especially for a main event. And I think if this was earlier in the card, or it, yeah, it would still be pretty bland, but it'd be a little bit more forgivable. But the fact that this is the main event, I think, uh, is a, like especially doesn't do it any favors. But yeah, nothing was horribly botched, uh, 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 and you can tell Ted as for the most part kind of working around Shane Douglas, making sure he doesn't hurt him too bad. And so that's nice at least. But yeah, otherwise it's a pretty dull match, and I I can see why people who oh, again. Is this the worst match in ECW history? He, that may be debatable. Well, uh, well, obviously, I'll leave that to the experts because, sadly, not super familiar with ECW. That, sadly, was kind of before my time. I'm Granted, I was born in 2000, but that was pretty much like... But by that point, the writing was pretty much on the wall for ECW. And I was born in September. Or, and I think, I think that was... About, I think by the time I was born, that's when ECW had like lost their TV deal and everything. But... Uh, yeah. yeah, so oh, I'll leave it to the expert hurts, but in the meantime, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and turn on post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see as it drops. But let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the match and my review of the match. Did you like to like the match? Did you like to like my review of the match? Let me know. And I don't mention this all the time, but uh. Uh, uh, if you do have any match recommendations, uh, please let me know. You can either uh, drop them in the comments. You can uh, message me on my social medias. I have a Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or, uh, or uh, those pages. Is uh, pretty much any way you can get a hold of me. If you have any match recommendations, whether it be for off a month or otherwise, please uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. But thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.